I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, family. Welcome to another exciting edition of Happy Talks. Um, tonight, we have a very interesting show. Um, those people who are not maybe aware, um, there's a lot been going on in the nation state of Haiti um, with some of the images that we've been seeing from mainstream media. But we're here tonight to set the record straight. You know, we got to be really careful with the information that we're receiving from some of these uh, these news outlets, if you will, about what's happen on, happening in our, in our beloved country. Um, we understand that Haiti belongs to all Africans around the world. And we wanted to get a, a really, really kind of insightful discussion tonight involving the underlining issues behind the crisis in Haiti. And I say that because these issues go beyond um, the current situation and it goes beyond maybe past, you know, obviously since the independence of or even before the, the uh, enslaved people were brought there. So we have an exciting discussion tonight with Professor James Small and Sister Isalie Dento. Um, we definitely, before we get into that, we want to kind of talk about a couple different things. One, we talked about this last week. Um, Happy, um, the film, is now on um, Amazon Prime for those who are interested. You know, tell the folks to go ahead if they've seen it already. Make sure you just go ahead and get a copy. Also, we have the Happy Super Sale going on for all the merchandise, happyfilm.com. Um, the newsletter was a big thing. We had a few people sign up since the last um, show, and it was almost like three or four months since we actually been on Happy Talk. So we definitely want to, you know, come back in and tell people, you know, what's going on in the world of Happy. So with that being said, the newsletter is always an important way to stay in touch, even if we're not online broadcasting shows is a good idea to um be connected with us through the happy newsletter um and as always you can always show your love and support by liking sharing and commenting on the video um please before we get started take this opportunity to do so like comment and share um also with that we can help us out with our forty thousand push on youtube we're about a few thousand short of that and help us get to the 40K. If you have not done so already, please take this opportunity to subscribe to the channel. So we have two fantastic guests today to talk about the, again, the underlying issues behind the crisis in Haiti. Um, one, obviously, is a resident scholar here in Hoppy. That's Professor James Small. Um, the sister, uh, uh, Professor, I'm going to call her Professor Aisley Danto. She's um, a remarkable um, person, remarkable spirit. Uh, I just want to go ahead and just um, introduce her, read her bio. This is her first time on the show. We want to make sure that the family recognizes, and people may have already been familiar with her because she has a lot of great works out there, and she's been doing this remarkable work for a very, very long time. Um, but for hearing Happy Talks, this is her first time, and we're pleased to have her on the show. Esle Danto is a human rights and international law attorney, award-winning playwright, performance poet, and cultural activist. She was born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, Haiti, excuse me, and raised in the United States. She's a Haiti scholar and runs the Ezele Network, the Free Haiti Movement, the Haitian Lawyers uh, Leadership Network, Zili Designs and Zili Dilo, Clean Water, Renewable Power and Skill Transfer Project for Haiti, which won the Global Energy Award. Wow. Uh, Ezele Danto is the author of 10 plays and two book series. She regularly conducts Haiti teachings and non-colonial um, narrative on Haiti, centering on Haiti's wealth and natural resources, revolutionary culture of uh, voodoo, spirituality, uh, expansion of uh, this through the, the voodoo, jazzery, uh, performance productions. Isley was also featured, Aidi Scholar and Historian in the documentary 1804, The Hidden History of Aidi in, in 2018. Uh, Aisley was honored at the Connecticut Woman Hall of Frame of Her Lifetime of Justice and Cultural Advocacy Works. Um, so without any further ado, we're going to introduce our guest. Actually, Professor Smalls is running a little late, but we hope to have him a little bit later on the show. We're going to introduce uh, Professor Elise Danto. Greetings, my sister. How are you? Honor and respect. Honor and respect to all your listeners. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, 
I just want to kind of, well, we had such an amazing conversation the other day and uh, I felt like I felt so honored to really get that information from you. It was such a, a blessing to, to really be a part of that and, you know, call the sister just to get some background information. Cause I got to tell you, I, I don't, I know some of the history and just, you know, kind of surface, but just to really get more background information, I was again, pleased to have had that opportunity to speak with you. So, you know, in that discussion, we talked about so many different things. And one of the things, you know, that we talked about was the real issues versus what they are trying to show us on the media. And I really wanted to kind of, you know, kind of touch into that. Um, but, you know, I, I do have my first question for you, I guess, would be, what's the difference between the nation of Haiti we hear about today and the nation created by Jean-Jacques Dessalines? Yes. So Jean-Jacques Dessalines is Haiti's founding father. He created something called the Empire of Liberty. And in that space, he, <clears throat> he wrote a constitution and he, he, he laid down what we were and it was, it's different than a republic, a corporatized republic with a central bank and so on. He wanted the people to be the center. So for instance, in his constitution, he defined what a black man is. He said that a black man is a good son, a good husband. Um, and then he said, above all, a black man is a good soldier because he understood that he was living within a hostile American Mediterranean that the exploiters and the slavers and colonists were always gonna come back or try to come back to re-enslave us because we stopped their exploitation, their good, the good gig they had of committing atrocities. So he wanted, he didn't wanna copy and paste the, the empire of Napoleon, right? For instance, um, he didn't do a republic, as I said, he did an empire. And in that space, there are like three fundamental. Um, so the nation uh, is IET. So he gave it the name of all those who were uh, genocide. So, and then he said, I have avenged America. What he wanted was a space where all those who had come before us, all those who are here with us, and all those are descendants. So this that's what this space is for. It's, it's for all that came before us. So we are IET. When you say my name, you're lifting up the Kawanabo or... Uh, Queen Anakaona, uh, IET is the first place where the Mahafa started for Black people in the Western Hemisphere. There was 1,200 years of Arab enslavement in North Africa, but for the West, this is the first place in 1492 that the Spaniards came and then the, and then the French and then the British. So he wanted something different that recognized the African that came before us and, and <clears throat> knowing his history, you know, the Nile Congo, all going all the way back. A lot of the, some people say the majority um, of the folks that were there uh, that fought the revolution came from the Congo, came from Niger, came from Dahomey. And so these people had a history and they came with their history. So when they won, they amalgamated their history. And so a nation is, our nation is for all African people on the planet who sets their foot on that space. It is not for warmongers or colonists or slavers. And that was directly written in the constitution. Of course, in 1915, um, Roosevelt uh, rewrote our constitution to take that provision out. 
and we've been under occupation since then. So the nation that he envisioned is what free IET movement that I lead, that's what we're elevating. And that that in that nation, you have men who are protectors, you have women who 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 actually uh fought in the war. Dahomean woman taught Jean-Jacques Dessalines from from the Dahomey uh, elite, what the European call Amazons. Um, she, her name is Tantoya and she helped raise them. So <coughs> the people of the nation are the masses and it even included um, white folks who fought with us. So the three principles of the nation that I always say is, you know, not only to always remember that the European colonists genocide, the Af the um, Taino Aisien who were there. Always remember that because we are we are living on that space. And there were Africans. Obviously, Africans are original to the planet, so there were Africans in Haiti too. But so we remember all those who were genocide, and then we remember those who fought in the revolution, those who are here now on. The land now, there's 13 million Haitian in IT and about 5 million over, overseas. And anyone who is fleeing tyranny may become part of this nation that Desalines dreamed of, even if you were white. Um, you couldn't be a citizen, but you could have sanctuary. And, the, and, and he proved that because as soon as we won our independence in 1804. He put an advertisement in the papers in Philadelphia and New York and so on, essentially saying to all ship captains in Carolina and so on, you know, bring your cargo here. I will pay you $40 a head. And as soon as these Africans set foot on IHC, they are free. So that's the nation that he envisioned and the women who influenced him and our template at the free IT movement comes from a woman from the Congo who held um, uh, the, the, the Vodun ceremony that began the Haitian revolution. And this is what she said in King Congo. Kanga Mandele, Kanga Bafioti, Kanga Najoki. We have to stop, kill, marginalize, get out of our way, Mandele. And, and the Kingongo language, that's Mandele is the white man, the colonist, the slaver, the stranger. It actually means stranger. And then his black collaborators is Bafioti because he used black collaborators um, everywhere to, 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 to be the, the, the slave catchers. He used his mulatto, uh, to be the slave catchers. <clears throat> and then, and he did that in West Africa as well as in IT. Uh, so sexual, uh, sex is a, is a weapon of war from very far, for long ago. Um, and then, so Kanga Najoki means we have to stop his uh, uh, levels of activity his religion, his media, his um, education, economic system, way of every level of activity of the white man is used for domination. And for those who know Neely Fuller, think of those um, areas. So that came from um, Mumbo Inun, who was with Bookman, and Bookman did the, the, the Bookman prayer, and she did this strategy that I tell you that we always say, and it's the same thing. Right now, the colonists in IET, they're, 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 it's Mandele, Bafioti, the black collaborators, and all of his uh, means of talking about us, his media, his education, his religion, his economics, his military, so those are the things that, that Mambo Yinan said that we had to be very, very concerned about, that we do not live in our nation 
in the manner that they live in these uh, structures, these educational structures, these, um, so that's what the nation is. And it, it, it has a structure, it has a people, and it has a principle, and it has an 1805 constitution. 1805 Constitution. Wow. Family, please take this opportunity to like, comment, and share. Um, we're just getting started on this powerful discussion. Send it to about 10 people that you know. Let's get the word out. Let them know Happy Talks is live um, with this awesome discussion, the underlying issues behind the crisis in Haiti. Um, one of the things is, when as you were speaking, um, something that struck me was um, Desilene's presence and his, his, his uh, philosophical outlook on just black people universally. And I would like to ask you, do you think or see him as one of the first or earliest Pan-Africanists? Absolutely, absolutely. Because, um, you know, as I said, you know, he put it in the newspaper, bring me right. all your cargo. I don't care right. where they come from, South Carolina, Congo, East Africa, you know, yeah. bring them to me. This is a black land. This is a black Specific. land. This is a black wow. land. Wow. And, you know, and that's why, you know, I, I wanted to just highlight that and make sure it's underscored perfectly that we we get it, that this is uni this is something universally connect. We're as black people we're universally connected to this topic. And we don't see this as something isolated, that this is something that we all need to take ownership of. So so thank you for that. So, you know, I understand that um with some of the the issues going on, it's it's kind of separated uh, between different parts of the of the country. And with that being said, what are some of the the, the issues going on in the capital, Port-au-Prince, versus the rest of the country? Can you speak to that, please? Yes, absolutely. So, since two thousand and four, then that was our bicentennial, our two hundredth year anniversary. The European, I'd like to introduce some of you who may not know about him. His name is, he was the secretary of um, the greatest hero to ever live, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, right? Our founding, our founding father. Remember, um, Toussaint Louverture is not our founding father. Toussaint Louverture was dead when IET was created because um, Toussaint Louverture had been tricked by the French um, at a meeting and they, they kidnapped him and brought him to the Juro Mountains and essentially um, let him freeze to death. So Dessalines, his general, took over. So um, Toussaint Louverture stands for Black Rule French Colony. He was a French general, and he really thought that somehow they're going to treat him um, the way they treat their white generals. He was the supreme leader of the of the nation because the man was brilliant. Um, he fought the Spanish, the French, um, until he got our independence. But in 1802, um, Napoleon came back and they wanted to re-enslave us and and those that they couldn't re-enslave they were going to kill so the template that i just told you about where there are mandele the colonist slaver today in port au prince they're called the core group and they are made up of six nations six former enslaving nations that can't sleep at night thinking of black people free. Um, they need, they want everything from us. Sex, labor, exploitation, um, our resources, our admiration. And they had that a thousand years in, in the Arab space and then 500, 300 years in IHC. And they just can't let go. Their academics won't tell you that. So this, what you have to understand about what's happening in the capital of Port-au-Prince right now is between two to three million, depending on who you talk to, people. And then there's another 10 million outside. But the what they're calling the gangs and what I normally call the men with U.S. arms, these are CIA assets. The, and I try to explain to you who they are. 
because this is a psyops that they're doing in the media in order to uh, force their public to 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 rally like those um, domestic Negroes did at the White House I, uh, yesterday to rally and ask for U.S. intervention into IET. That's what they want. So they put these men with U.S. arms on the street to murder weak, unprotected Haitians who have nowhere else to go, who are part of their own neighborhoods. And that's what they're doing. They're not revolutionaries. So they're bafioti, they're collaborators. If you're killing your people and you're not killing the oppressor, then you're not a revolutionary. They're killing and burning their own people, their, the, their peop the people's assets. Now here's what happens. And this happens not just in IET. It happens all over. It's happening in the Congo and Niger, even Palestine. Let's look at that right now, right? Because people, people know a little bit more about Palestine. So Netanyahu, Netanyahu, the, the prime minister, right? They never want, let's say, Palestine to become a nation. So they try to separate the West Bank and Gaza. And even though they have a president, they were supporting Hamas. Netanyahu supported Hamas. In order, <laughs> so that's what they're doing in IET, right? They don't want us to have a nation. They don't want us to have uh, democratic elections. So they support uh, underprivileged, hungry, illiterate men who are on the streets and they give them $5,000 automatic weapons and they pay them a stipend to go do certain things. And then they create a narrative around that. So, so if you look at Hamas, right, the Netanyahu used Hamas to divide uh, West Bank and Gaza. Well, they're using um, the two big ones right now is Guy Philippe and um, Jimmy Chirizier, which, who they call barbecue. Um, both are former policemen and remember, the first thing that the white man does in your nation is train your police. So the, both of them were trained <laughs> by the United States. Understand that very clearly. They're not regular, regular folks. And then they, and then they, they use their guns to bring, you know, young men who don't have any other future, who think of the, you know, the Crips in the Bloods, right? When when you're in poverty and there's a a person who has a gun and who has money, who has swag, you know, you're a young kid and you don't really know. So they 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 and and if you don't have the protection of these men, um, you die. So just think of them like that. They're black collaborators. They're like Boko Haram, who the CIA trained to keep the division going in Nigeria. I mean, what, in what world do black men rape, gang rape children, take them out of school, kidnap them? That's what Boko Haram does. That is not part of our civilization or history, okay? What's going on in Port-au-Prince is not part of our civilization or history. It is part of the core group ruling, divide, conquer, do atrocities. They're just monsters. And Boisantonnerre, the first um, secretary for Jean-Jacques, he was the secretary for Jean-Jacques Dessalines. He has a book out, out that I, I always recommend people to go try to figure. It, it's in it's in French. Excuse me, it's in a French. But um, there are brothers out there that 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 have YouTube channels where they where they translate it for you and you guys can find it. But Boisot Tonnerre said that that they were monsters that because back in the during the time of the revolution, 
they would um, train dogs to eat these the enslaved. Like they would they would they would uh, starve them, and then and then they would you know make them um, uh, 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 give them some sort of a you know people sent and had them go out and do that. These people were they're not people. So who are they today? They're led by the United States. Okay, whoever's leading the United States, it doesn't matter whether it's Democrat or Republican. Obama was awful. He left us with Hillary and Bill Clinton, who doing the earthquake raised $13 billion and left Haiti the way you see it today. And we don't know where that money went. Um, and then not only that, they brought us a biological weapon, which was cholera, which killed um, between 10 to 30 thousand Haitians and made over one to three million sick. And we're still dealing with that. And now, right, because of all of the, see, the United States wants, this is what they want. They want a Rwanda in IHC. They want a civil war. Why do they want a civil war? Not only because they hate our ideological and revolutionary spirit, because there, we live within, there's um, uh, 14 other Caribbean states, uh, na island nations, right? We're the only one in the whole planet who fought the whites and beat them um, and create a nation where uh, a, a country that was ruled by slavers is now ruled by their victims, those who were enslaved. That's never happened in, in, in world history. So um, they want to erase that. So for them, they're using these men that they train in the police. They're using uh, uh, Jimmy Chirizier and Guy Philippe. They already used Guy Philippe once, right? They used Guy Philippe in 2004 during the bicentennial when they took down one of my my client, uh, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, the first democratically elected president, right? And he had at that time asked for France to pay back the independence debt, right? We, we are also the, the people that were forced by the European tribes to pay a, an, a reparations to the enslavers. And that reparation was more than 10 times the amount that Jefferson paid for the Louisiana Purchase. 150 million gold francs, right? He only paid 15 million for the Louisiana territory that more than tripled the size of the United States. But this little country that's less, you know, smaller than Maryland had to pay 10 times the amount that Jefferson paid Napoleon for the Louisiana Purchase that made the United States the superpower it is today. So you have these, um, uh, so they come into your country and they tell you they come to protect you, right? Just like uh, uh, Napoleon, right? When Napoleon came to destroy uh, and re-enslave uh, uh, Toussaint Louverture's people, the Salines people, he wrote a letter to them and said, oh, I'm here to protect you. And yet the secret orders was to commit genocide and let's bring in fresh Africans who never fought uh, a, a European and won in battle. So that's what they want to do now, right? They want the land free of Africans. If they could bring it down to 5 million, that's what they want. Because they say in 2004, they had a meeting, they call it the Ottawa Initiative of all of the uh, uh, ministers no Haitian was there. And they said that by the year 2019, IT would have 20 million people. And that was a bomb waiting to happen. So they came in in 2004 and for 13 years, they crushed us. Like I said, they brought us cholera. The UN raped our women and our, and our men to the point where we never had homosexuality in the way that it is now. 
And now, you know, you can go to the streets and see these young men um, soliciting. That was never part of our culture. That's what the UN mission brings all over the planet. This is what they teach policemen. So the first thing these men with U.S. arms will do is rape the children, the women as a, as a means of control. They learn that from somebody. And so what you see on the streets right now is a, a, a PSYOP operation, a script written and State Department basement where these Neanderthals live. And um, so they, these gangs um, have put to, are, were put together by a U.S. ambassador named Ellen Laloum. Just look it up, people. Okay, Ellen Laloum said they had to come into a coalition because you know the United States wanted to control them. And let me tell you, so she was the head of the UN mission in IT, and she's the one that put the G9, which is the coalition that Cherizier, Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier, is um, part of. She's the one that put it together. This is a white woman, and I want to tell black people that white women are the ones that they use all over the planet because, you know, I guess black men, you know, allow themselves to be seduced by these witches. So for instance, right, um, Victoria Newman, and um, she's the one that did the coup d'etat and the regime change in Ukraine, which gives us this, this, this uh, war right now. Um, and and you, they're all over IT. Uh, Ellen Lalume, Michelle Sisson. These are career, career diplomats that Americans have no idea about. Um, they go from the Congo to the Niger. They create the same gangs everywhere. Okay, and these women. What I find very ironic is that black folks in America doing the civil rights movement are kind of the reason why these women have a job because black folks fought for economic opportunity and they turned it into affirmative action and gave it to their white wives. And, and a lot of them are working overseas and believe me, let me tell you, they are worse than the old boy, old, old white boy. These are, these, these, these are, steel, underwear, warmongers, and they're in IT. And they're creating these gangs. They help to create um, Boko Haram and all of that stuff. You understand? So, so that's, so, so always remember that whatever the United States is saying to you, that it, like I have seen <laughs> just like this week, maybe four interviews with Jimmy Cherizier and NBC, um, uh, 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 all these news, uh, major news media. Listen, people, the US media, okay? What is that thing called again? Um, uh, Mockingbird, right? Look it up, right? It, it's a bunch of propaganda that they create with their media, right? Um, it's a PSYOP operation, right? Because they want, they need the, the mercenary, their mercenaries to have an international cover to continue to take out the resources that they're taking out in the Gulf of Port-au-Prince. So the reason why these gangs are in Port-au-Prince, this is where all the white ambassadors or satellites of Napoleon, like uh, Brian Tonnerre said in his and in his um, uh, 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 history book, right? He, uh, it's called um, Memory for the History of IT. And it was written in 1804, people. Find it because the academics are not going to tell you a real story. And he tells you how evil these people are, how they came to, 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 to bring genocide. Well, that's what they've come to do. And it's because of the work that I've done for the last 30 years that we, we stopped them, but you won't see me on 
Like they won't call me a, a revolutionary. They'll find some guy who knows no, he has no clue. And they'll put a gun in his hand and they'll do X, Y, and Z. They know how to manipulate. So that's what Jimmy Chazier is. That's what um, uh, Guy Philippe is. But the young people, this is what happens. When you rape a woman, you affect at least three generations. It, 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 it stays in her body. It's a trauma that affects the whole entire family. And they know that. So they urge like the Boko Haram folks in, you know, to take these young children, these young girls and mass rape them. That's three generation. That's what's happening in Nigeria. That's what they're trying to do in IT, except that we have something called Boakale. Okay. When Haitians find these people, they send them to hell. And that's what we do. Wow. Powerful. Family, again, please like, comment, and share. Um, Sister Ezeli, I have a couple of quick questions, follow up with that. And, and the one that I'm sure a lot of people in the audience are thinking of is, um, I can't pronounce his name, uh, Ch Chazelle, um Barbecue. How did he get the nickname Barbecue? Where does that come from? It's such uh, an unusual I, name. Yeah, his mother was a street vendor. And she sold barbecue. <laughs> so is that, that's it. Simple as that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. But white liberals, right? They, they, they're, they're salacious in their lies. Right. There's a reason. Listen, um, I'm, I, I'm trying to, to, it's very hard um, to scale up my little tiny voice against like the huge mainstream media. Right. So for it, so what you have to know, go to my Instagram, Zili Danta, right? Without the E, right? I, I, I tried to put, because I used to write a lot, you know, and I, people don't read. So now I try, I'm trying to do the, 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 the small videos, uh, two minutes and so on. Um, I have one where I try to explain why they're trying to make us seem like we're cannibals. Cause this is, did, did, did this yes, in- yes. Um, I'm glad you're touching on this right here. Cause this is really <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. Go um, ahead, I'm sorry. If you if you guys look back when the US first came to IET in 1915 and they stayed for 20 years, right? They used to, they used to do the same salacious media stories. They used to tell their white uh, and other, you know, folks who are just, you know, don't, un don't know and are predisposed to think we are, we are cannibals when the real cannibals, right, are them, right? They devour us, right? I mean, and do it literally too with, uh, what's that guy? Jeffrey, whatever his name, Dahmer. Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is what they, and, and, and that was Vlad, the vampire. I mean, these people do this, that's what they do in the East. But that's it, they're always projecting their criminality onto somebody else so that they can look like they're beautiful people. But essentially, um, um, if you look at the video I put out, I'm trying to tell people, okay, the greatest revolutionaries, the greatest revolutionaries on planet Earth came from the Haitian Revolution. Mm. The United States likes to try to tell people it's the land of the free and the ver and the brave, right? And of course, you know, we laugh at them, right? Because we got we took our independence there's 50,000 englishmen in those waters with their boats in the gulf of port au prince right now uh. we kill with between 30 people go all the way up to 50,000 um french some say the napoleons sent 70,000 okay you know how many went back home 7,000. And wow. that was at the largest. He had to kneel. Wochambo had to kneel at the foot of Jean-Jacques de Saline, the greatest hero to ever live. Okay? And this man had said, Wochambo had said, he was like a chien rage. I don't know how I say that in English. He was like a, 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 a mad dog. 
Um, he had said that he was going to capture Desaline and skin him alive um, and make him all kinds of things, right? And when Desaline and, and his gen black generals beat that man at Vertier, he had to come with his hat to ask for safe passage back. Okay, now remember, that was 1804. Remember, um, black folks in America did not get free until 60 years later. In that time, the tribes, the European tribes got together and embargoed us. They would not, so they would not let us trade like outside, like IT. You know, they wouldn't allow us to have a, a, a Marine Corps. And if you're a nation, you need that. You need, you need to, to take your goods and go sell them and then bring, bring back um, uh, resources. But when, when they circled us, that was one. So the, uh, the United States, Jefferson, the pedophile Jefferson, who was nightly raping Sammy, Sally, Her Sally Hemings, is the person that wrote the U.S. Constitution. Okay, so put that U.S. Constitution next to the 1805 Jean-Jacques Dessalines Constitution. We did not make people three-fifths humans, even after they had genocide the Taino Haitian and kept us in slavery barbarically for 300 years. We didn't put in our Constitution that they were three-fifths human which you could have, you know, seen was as a reasonable thing. But that's what they said in Jefferson's constitution, that black folks were not human, they were three-fifths human. This is at this is, you know, we, we, we're the first, um, we got our independence in 1804, America released itself from the colonial Britain in, in 1776. So that's kind of where we are, right? They want to they they want to finish Leclerc's imperative, which Napoleon said we have we can't keep leave these descendants, these people alive. And that's what they've come to do. And the way they're trying to do it is by creating gangs that will displace people from areas that the United States want. It's normally the shoreline. So look at the map, people. Cherizier and his gangs and Izo and the others, they're like on the shoreline. In the Gulf of Port-au-Prince, if you look, IET has, we were blessed with resources. Um, IET has, they say, um, the largest reserve of oil in, hello, Professor Small, the largest reserve of oil, they say, in the world. That we, They say that the head of Venezuela's oil is in the waters of IT, where you see these gangs are. And then the core group, which is those six nations I was telling you about, led by the U.S., France, Canada, Germany, Spain, and Brazil. And then they have three uh, World War II organizations, the UN, the European Union, and the OAS. They have come as one fist to try to wipe us out. And that's what mm. you're seeing played out. So <clears throat> my, my first question when I when I hear this is is why? And you spoke of the the uh, the oil reserves, but could you please talk to some of the other um, mineral resources and the wealth of, of Aidi that may be there that they're looking to covet. Cause I'm assuming that this, this genocide and everything that they want to do, they don't do anything if there's no money involved. So it has to be something involved for them there. And I just want to know, I want the family to know what that is. Okay. So the European tribes have been fighting each other since before they found out there were other human beings on the, on the planet, right? They were just killing each other. Um, so you have, um, Western Europe and then Russia. 
they fight for hegemony. The U.S. wants to be the multi, uh, the uni, the only power, period, on the planet. So, at one point in time, right, Russia was a big power, and it has a foothold right next to us, like we're right in the middle between Cuba and Venezuela. And IT is a is a military base for the United States where they have the largest US embassy in the Western hemisphere. So imagine they have a largest, remember you, you listen to me, the they're not gonna hear this from the mainstream media, the largest US embassy in the Western hemisphere. And sometimes they say, sometimes they say three or, 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 or second largest embassy in the world, but I always say it's the fourth largest embassy in the world. It's as big as the embassy that they have in China. Remember, China has a billion people. That's how important we are. So between because of our strategic position in the Windward Passage, right? And you go through the Windward Passage, and if they do their wars, you can cut through the Panama Canal to get to the Pacific. That's a very important trade route. And all of the uh, 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 and and that's a very strategic military route, but Russia is in Cuba and Venezuela, which is right we're in the middle. The United States uses us to spy on these people. It feels like if it loses IT, it loses the West. The the it, it's whatever geopolitics hegemony and so on. So that's why they put us in what they call the Biden program, because another way of destroying us is to get is to leave men like you see in IT like that, that that are killing their own people. Right. Like this is my thing. And I want everyone listening to me to say this. The next time someone tell you that Jimmy Chalizier is a um, revolutionary. Right. Because, like I said, you know. Um, we have the greatest revolutionaries that ever lived. The United States wants to belittle that. They don't want to associate that with us because they tell people they're the land of the free and the brave when they had a constitution still today that makes slavery legal in the 13th Amendment. Still today. Right? This Aliens Constitution even let white people have land and become black. So they, they don't want that ideology and who we are to be going out there. But besides the, the, the head of Venezuela's oil, Venezuela has the largest oil reserves in the world, they say. But they said that the head of it is in IT's waters around that space in Port-au-Prince where you see these men are and are being armed to kill the people, to get them away from that space. Because the United States now is having its Middle Eastern war and it needs oil. Remember, under under Trump, they were trying to say Guado was the president, not Maduro. And then once Biden came in and the war started in Ukraine, they went hat in hand to Maduro for his oil. Imagine if they can tap into it in IET right in the Gulf of Port-au-Prince where barbecue and Chazé and those men don't even have a clue. So in addition to that, of course, we got uh, IET is a billion years old. When, when, when everything was underwater, the landmass of IET in Cuba was above water. Um, underneath us, I want you guys to go look up the blue pyramids, the blue pyramids. Remember our ancestors are cosmic. I'm glad Professor Small can talk to you about this. The blue pyramids are under uh cuba but we have them too they want to go in there they want that land they want to change our history during the 13 years that the un was in iet besides leaving us with cholera and some say about a million children who were because they raped our women because they have to disconnect us from the the the, the revolution so uh, those young people you see following Jimmy Chazier or having no future, a lot of them came from the rape of the UN. So their fathers are, I, as a lawyer, I, I, I brought a case against the UN asking for support for the children that were left 
um, because of the women that the, the UN raped. So imagine now they want to come back again after it took us all this time to get rid of them. And then you have those domestic Negroes who were just in a white house uh, yesterday asking because why? Because what they're seeing in the media about uh, Port-au-Prince being run by gangs. No, it's just some neighborhoods in Port-au-Prince. And then you have the rest of IET who are trying to fight so that none of that stuff comes to them. So that's the story. So we have, because we're so old um, and because, I mean, there's so much to tell you, I don't wanna go through all of it, but the thing is look up the blue pyramids and then up in the north, there are pyramids underneath the waters of IET. And then you have Iridium, 66 million years ago when the an asteroid fell. I don't know if it was a war going on, but the asteroid fell two places, South Africa, okay, which is really north, and IET. And whatever was there in terms of civilization was put underwater. When it came up, the, 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 the iridium, which is the remain of that asteroid, is the, one of the most valuable minerals that there is. And people like uh, Leon Musk and so on, they want it so that they can go try to colonize space because it provides its heat resistance, the most heat resistant metal um, as far, you know, that, that so, and it's, um, Haitian geologist, Dr. Vixamar says, one ton of iridium is worth $45 billion. So they know how rich we are. Wow. Wow. Professor Small, sorry, you look good. Thanks for being a part of the show tonight. I'm glad to have you. It's been some time that you've been on. Um, you're actually on mute right now. I'm going to head and uh... yeah. oh, there you go. Got you off mute. So, you know, we were, um, the sister and I have been talking for uh, talking to the family here for some time mm -hmm. about the underlying issues behind the crisis in Haiti or Haiti. I just wanted to kind of start with you um, with the question where I left off with uh, Sister Ezeli about the why. Why is this happening now? What's going on in the world um, to prompt these, uh, this, this killing and this, this bloodshed that's happening in, in the country of Haiti in, 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 in its current time? Mm -hmm. Well, I apologize for being late, but I had a family emergency. Um, had to take someone to the hospital. Uh, and so I wanted to get back because I know Esalie is a bundle of energy because she's got so much inside and she's trying to edit it as she brings it out because you can only do so much in the short time and space. But it's an honor to see one of the most brilliant revolutionaries um, sisters or brother out here today. She ain't no brother. She's all African woman, um, a queen, one of our princesses, one of our queens, one of our mothers, one of our sisters. And if you read any of her work going back for decades, you're going to see she's been on point, you know, and she's done it unafraid. Um, she scares me sometimes for her, you know, because you have to stand. If you're going to stand, you may as well stand strong. But she gave you about everything. The best I could do is give you an overview, review. Mm -hmm. um, she did it from the English Creole perspective. I'm going to do it from the English Gullah perspective. Um, everything she said is to be understood. Right. Geopolitically, right. Haiti is the most strategic location in the Western Hemisphere the biggest intelligence hub in the Western Hemisphere, the biggest intelligence hub for America outside of Langley, Virginia, mm. is Haiti. And you've got wow. to understand what that means. Haiti is used to control all of the Caribbean. Haiti is used to control Central and South America. This is the, all of the high-tech electronic listening equipment is in that embassy. They train the subversive that they stand in all of the different countries in the Caribbean. They run an international intelligence apparatus for the Western Hemisphere out of Haiti. And they've managed to get away with it 
and this is the only woman that's been called pulling the only person that's really been pulling the cover off of them for years. Everybody else thought it was some little, we could sit down at a negotiating table with these people and make peace. No, you cannot. They're not interested in anything except what they're doing. And she talked about the shipping. Most people don't understand. The Panama Canal is there, but most shipping does not go through the Panama Canal. Matter of fact, the Panama Canal is pretty much outdated for the size of the kind of tankers uh, that's now moving and cargo ships carrying these containers. These container ships, they can't, most of them can't go through the Panama Canal. They've got to pass between Haiti and Cuba. Do you understand that? Mm. That's like the Suez Canal of the Caribbean. And America wants to control it. Even though they've been out of contract in Guantanamo, they won't leave Cuba. They're still occupying Cuba and Guantanamo. And there's multiple islands off of the coast of Haiti on this side of the strait that they've all got all kinds of bases there that they've had there for decades. Military and naval facilities. I was stationed in the U.S. Navy at Guantanamo Bay. I know a lot about how the apparatus work. I was aboard the USS Manley, DD-940, our destroyer leader under a uh, uh, an admiralty. So we were the flagship, the bosses, you know? So they, they want to control that space. But the other piece that she explained, you want to make sure that Russia doesn't have an impact. You want to make sure Cuba can't do anything to circumvent your, your blockade of Cuba in terms of getting resources into Cuba. All of this is being managed out of Haiti. That's just the geopolitical part and the intelligence part. But the other piece is there is, and she explained this, a lot of people don't get it. There is an anti-African vengeance uh. against the revolution that took place in Haiti. They want to murder Dessaline over and over and over again. They want to murder Toussaint over and over and over again. It is in their psyche. They will not accept that Haiti defeated the French. Haiti defeated the British. Haiti defeated the Spanish. And Haiti defeated the Americans because America was financing all three at some stage. Okay. And so you're talking about defeating the most powerful, four most powerful European nations ever arrayed in the world. And they don't want that to be a normal truth. They don't want that to be the status quo in terms of your understanding of Haiti. Haiti's got enough wealth. If it just, if it was just the iridium, there's enough wealth for every Haitian to be a millionaire tomorrow if they're allowed to mine their own iridium. If it was just the oil, there's enough oil for every Haitian to be a millionaire tomorrow. Haiti's not poor. It's the richest island in the Caribbean. It has bauxite. The world is aluminum. Haiti's got enough bauxite to set up its own Kaiser aluminum plan if it wanted to. Or we, we won't call it Kaiser, of course. You know, it has gold. It's estimated as something like $30 billion worth of gold that is knowable still in the ground. You know, you got Gilbert, just uh, what's his name? Gilbert, Gilbert, whatever. There's, Gilbert Dijon. Um, who, who's the diamond king down there. And that's the same diamond king running around the Congo. You know, so-called genocide. Um, and then you have this other one, bit starts with a B. I'm tired of it. <laughs> um, but he's, he's also one of the, the richest man, an Israeli person is one of the richest billionaire in Haiti. What, what the hell is that about? And 1%, less than 1% of Lebanese and Syrians who was offered sanctuary in Haiti when they were being destroyed by the Ottoman Turks. And they've collaborated almost from the beginning with the West to control all of the wealth and the resources of Haiti. Haiti could be one of the biggest rice producers in this hemisphere. But Clinton and them having it take ripe, getting rice from Arkansas, which I was told by my comrade 
that it has the highest content of lead of any rice that's being sold anywhere. So it's causing all kinds of trauma in the young people and even the elder people of Haiti. Even Clinton had to get on, on a, a, a television thing and said that he, he, it was a big mistake for him to destroy the rice production of Haiti. He said this out of his own mouth and to force them to accept the rice from Arkansas. And it can go on and on because Haiti, I've been all over Haiti, riding an old beat up bus. So you mean you're going to see everything from the bus because you're on the road, right? Up in the plateau, up in the mountains. And Haiti is one of the most beautiful pieces of real estate on the planet Earth. It is one of the sweetest places you could go, you know? But the geopolitical piece that she described so well to you, and I just elaborated on, the wealth that Haiti has, the copper, the bauxite, the gold, the iridium, the, um, the, what's the, 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 there's a number of others. Any one of those things being owned by the people of Haiti would eradicate anything you could call poverty economically on the grounds in Haiti. So this is not a question about Haiti got the wealth. They keep coming up with this concept, Haiti can't manage itself. It managed kicking Spain's behind, France behind, America's behind, and Britain's behind very well. But part of this is psycho-spiritual European genocidal revenge. Uh. We, we can't play that down. If you play that down, you don't really understand European people. You know, And the rest is really having a hub that they can geopolitically and, and in terms of their intelligence apparatus control the rest of the Caribbean, Central, South America. And Haiti is the place that chose to do that. That's why they have the biggest embassy in the Western Hemisphere. But not to forget the DEA and others been running all over Haiti pretending they're fighting drugs yet. Haiti's one of the biggest drug corridors coming in to North America and is well guarded by America. You got the DEA all over the place. What are they doing? Guarding the drug dealers? <laughs> and we don't we don't we don't talk about that. And we see the anti African, anti Haitian behavior when Haitian immigrants try to come to America, they're arrested immediately, put in boats and taken back home. Other immigrants come. There's a law that won't allow them to be arrested at the southern border, and they've got to be allowed to file for for um what's this word they're using um, um amnesty or whatever they're using. We don't get a chance to file for shit. We don't get to cross the border unarrested. We got to get on the boat and be sent back, and and die in the sea trying to get here, and we're what little more than 90 miles away hmm. so but but let's put make sure we put it so people really get it the natural resources we've told you about is real somebody else is mining it and making money off of it off of the gold off of the copper off of the bauxite off of the iridium and of the natural gas we talked about the while we forgot about the natural gas which is just the significant to the West. It was um, the, the Secretary of State under Bush. I forgot his name. He said, well, he, he went on national television and said, Haiti's oil reserve belongs to America. What was that guy's yeah. name? You remember him? The, the, he, he actually went on national TV and said that. So they're operating from that space because any model if Haiti is allowed to be a model of how to set up a free state, it has no competition, you understand? No one else have set up on all this fantasy about democracy and socialism, none of them have set up a free state. Haiti is the only one that was successful in setting up a nation that was a republic that offered true freedom to everyone, including whites, as Sister said. No one else has done that successfully anywhere in the world at any time in history, except in the ancient days, which we don't know much about Kemet and the other places. So if we want to do some things, we need to be sending emails. We need to be sending Twitters 
Instagram to every one of the Negro caucus person in Washington, D.C., and the white folks, but the Negro collaborators especially, because how do you sit there and see this shit going on and you're in the most powerful position in America talking about you, 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 you have democracy, you got a black caucus, and you're now the, the, the what do you call the minority leaders in the Congress, and nobody's mentioning Haiti. Not an utter from any of them. And then we've got other so-called reparation, I'm not going to call their name, and civil rights activists working as collaborators with this Montana group and other groupings. And I saw a picture of some of them sitting around the table with the, the, the National Secretary of State of America the other day making decisions on Haiti and saying, oh, there's some Haitians sitting here. Where did you find them? And then my critique on the, on the American population, both the black American population and the Haitian population, get off your asses. There's nearly a million Haitians in this country. We will stand with you in the streets. Let's get to the streets. I was in such a situation, I couldn't do it, but three of those so-called presidents was downtown New York the other day, and we didn't have one Haitian flag there. I'm gonna take the hit on that too, because if nobody else went there, I should have went there with something. The Palestinians was all over the place. And where were we? And we're going to vote for these people in November? For what? We need to let them know. Your winning in November is tied to what happens in Haiti. You don't do the right thing in Haiti. You will not win in November. We've got enough time to stop your planned victory. I don't care for Trump, but I would prefer Trump just to put you in check. Because what they're doing is worse than anything we could have imagined Trump would do. Imagine the worst that Trump would do. Biden and them are doing that right now to Haiti. Lying. CNN is lying through all of its C's and its N. Lying. Giving false propaganda to the world. MSNBC, lying. CBS, lying. ABC, lying and giving false propaganda. Just like they said, the people from Hamas raped women and killed babies. And even the Israeli press said that never happened. Uh. International press and human rights said that never happened. But they got it enough out here to make people confused. Uh. So now they're going to tell us about some gangs. And and I was watching a, a friend of mine was just down in Petionville last week and sent me some pictures. He looked like he was in friggin' Times Square. All right, and so they sent us all of this confused situation on Main Street for the Prince and tell us that's Haiti. Somebody else did a drone thing down in um, Cape Haitian. People weren't doing none of this stuff, you know? And there's a lot, if you could do more, and that's what people need to start doing is check out for yourself. They're lying to you. They're misleading you. They're creating a rationale to justify the invasion force that's sitting in islands already off of the coast of Haiti in case they can't get the ones on the ground to do what they want, in case they bring in these fools from Kenya. And they're going to fall because even the gang's going to beat their behinds because they can't even stand up to these kids in the street. Okay? But they're prepared with the U.S. military, special forces, and Marines. They've got a bunch of them already in the embassy. They've got them in a number of ships off the coast waiting to see what they are going to do. And we're sitting here with them telling us Haiti is unable to govern itself. Get the hell out of Haiti and let us govern ourselves. And let's see if we're willing to govern ourselves. You get out. Leave us alone. All right? Give us the opportunity. We elect Aristide. You overthrew the man twice. Whatever my criticism of, he was our president. You had no right. That was a criminal, international criminal operation. And I don't want to leave Germany and Israel out of the, of the core group, you know? Huh. And, and people are talking about a core group and not explaining who the hell they are. I heard some people on the news thing, and, but they haven't told nobody, what is this core group you just mentioned? Huh. Who are these people? It's their corporations that's down there robbing the country blind. And American intelligence 
And we, we don't we think of intelligence. I mean, when somebody said they have an intelligence agency, you think it's about some James Bond stuff. No, that's not how that thing works. These people gather data on economics. They gather data on sociology. They gather data on education. They gather data on raw materials. They gather data on the agriculture possibility and capabilities. It, intelligence simply means you have the information to allow you to plot and take advantage of another population who don't have that same information on themselves or you. It's about data gathering. And then somebody analyzing all of this data to, to, so that they can carry forth their program while convincing the world of good people, people in the world who really love Haiti. White people, black people want to see the best for Haiti. They're lying to these people, convincing these people that something is going on in Haiti that is not going on there at all. So that they can justify and rationalize continue domination, destruction, and death of the Haitian people and control of the Haitian uh, real estate and the Haitian polity. Thank you, Professor Smalls. And we have to tell our elected officials, like this mayor of New York, how backwards can you be? Al Southton, we know who you are, but you, you're walking around naked now. And Ron Daniels, you know, I'm gonna have to raise it in the national community. How are any of you able to let this go on and nobody's saying nothing? I'm calling you Negroes out for what you are, your collaborators, your traitors to the race. Mm. And you know it. It'd be one thing if you were ignorant and you were trying to be helpful and you didn't know what the situation was, but each one of you know what it is. Each one of you know this is about a coup d'etat of the Haitian people's right to self-government and self-determination. Wow. Thank you, Professor Smalls. Um, Sister Ezele, uh, we, the other day we had a conversation, we spoke, Professor Smalls just kind of um, <clears throat> opened the door for this, the food sovereignty piece, the piece with the rice and understanding how the people are being controlled by way of food in, in IED. Could you please elaborate on that? Sure, yes. Um, and thank you so much, Professor Small, for being here and telling everyone what's going on in IHC. I appreciate you so much. The, um, obviously, if they take, if they make you hungry, which is a traditional European war method, right? They did it to their serfs. They, mm -hmm. The first thing they do when, when they go to war, if you see some of these Viking movies, is to burn up all the fields. So that's what they do in IT, right? Um, IT, 30 years ago, a little more than 30 years ago, back in the um, 80s and 70s, and those years, um, we fed ourselves. We had food sovereignty. And the United States came in around the 1980s and decided um, that subsidized U.S. rice needed a needed a market and you know i they eat a lot of rice um they impoverished us first by killing all of our um livestock remember um port au prince is is the place they they're always telling you about but 70 percent of i are farmers they live outside in, in their lacous, combit, jardin, their 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 homesteads where 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 they make their own food. And then the La, La Tibonite area is where they have the food. So specifically, Bill Clinton made as a condition to bringing Aristide back. They have something, they have an economic system. Remember, I was telling you that um Mambo Inan told us we had to get rid of their baf their najoki their their all levels of activity is meant to be about domination and profit for them so they used their subsidized goods and dumped rice arkansas rice bill clinton rice into IET. but before that when they brought aristide back in 1994 they made him sign that he was going to lower the tariff on local goods, 
right? That's what they call neoliberalism. And that's what IUCN called the death plan. So when they lowered, like, I think it was like, if you were going to import um, foreign rice into IET in order to protect our local rice, you had to pay a 35% tax or tariff. They lowered that from 35 to three mm. and then started dumping rice that's subsidized, right? So that means that it's cheap. It was cheaper than the local grown rice and destroyed, Bill Clinton destroyed our food sovereignty. And today, Haitians, and then what he did was, and this, this is genocide, right? The, the men you see in Port-au-Prince are living in this, these slums. In the 80s, the United States created these slums in IET first, before they did it anywhere in, else in the Caribbean. Um, they said that um, in order to, we had to come off of our lands in the, in the outback and come into the cities and do sweatshops. So they created these zones and that's what Cité Soleil was. And under the, under the Duvalier regime, it was called Cité Simone. And all of a sudden you, you built this city within Port-au-Prince of, and then, you know, they take the goods, they're right next to the, to, to the shoreline and bring them to the America. And so we were doing all sorts of, of, of you know, Hanes underwear and T-shirts and so on. But at a certain point doing their war with China, when Nixon opened up China, they took all those jobs that they had forced the people, that they first they, they got rid of our livestock, they got rid of, they said that the Haitian pig um, uh, had some disease and then they killed them all. Turns out they didn't have any disease. And then they dumped the rice so the farmers couldn't, couldn't make a living. And they tried to get them to come to work in the factories. And so, but, but, but at some point, the United States took this, all the factories out of Cité Soleil and then that's what you have, this slum. So in 2004, the people that were in those spaces with no job and no, they're the ones that got together and actually voted democratically elected president. That like the United States didn't expect that to happen. And so then they brought in the UN to kill them. And that from 2004 to now, that's what they did. And when they weren't killing them, I know for a fact just like they did in Baltimore and all our places in America. They police, the UN and IT would drop guns and make as if it's an accident in the middle of the ghetto. Mm. And that's how those gangs got started. And then there are oligarchs. So remember I was telling you that the template of colonialism is very, um, uh, 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 it's set. They don't change, right? They have Mandele, the colonist, right? You never see him, right? He acts like he's some neutral body, some ambassador. When he's a jackal, an assassin, an evil assassin, as Brian Antonio says. Um, and then you have his middlemen, right? Back in the day, his middlemen were the overseers, right? Today, they are the police, for instance, that he, that, that he trains, like Guy Philippe right now, who's out there, you know, um, and, and then what they'll do is they'll have a dossier on them. You know how, you know, this happens with the gangs in America, right? They'll have a dossier on you and then you become an informant. So uh, all these people are DEA informants. DEA, of course, is the biggest drug dealer in IT. This is how they make their money from Colombia, their clientele states, so that they can go fight their wars in the Middle East. But essentially, um, when the tariffs were no longer protecting the local economy, the U.S. was dumping rice into IET. The people now no longer had jobs, so they brought and and they didn't want. They did not want the government. Neoliberalism means that they privatize public assets to the wealthy. So all of the after Duvalier. All of the state-run 
entities were privatized to the local elites who are Syrian, Lebanese, Israelis. Gilbert Bijo is the biggest, uh, most wealthiest billionaire. He's from Aleppo, Syria, right? And I think when I was talking to you, I was trying to give you some history about these people. They're all over the Caribbean, these buffer races. They were Christians under, in the Ottoman Empire, right? So they were always a Western used people. But what you have to remember at doing the time of Sykes Pico, right? Doing when the when the British and the and the French got together to destroy the Ottoman Empire, right? They divided the 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 the, the spoils. And France came back in the guise of these Arabs, right? Because if you're in the Ottoman Empire and you're Christian, you're Catholic. France is Catholic. The Syrians in IET are Catholics. They gave them a space. They came as, as, as immigrants, as peddlers, and then the United States, like they do to immigrants in Black communities, like they do for the Koreans and the Hispanics. They give them loans. They give them access more to financing more than they do to the local black people in America. That's what they do in IT. So after a while, especially doing the, the, the occupation in 1915 to 1934, this was the first step for France to come back to IT. They came back through their proxies, the Syrian Lebanese. Okay, because at that time, remember, Syria was a French colony that, right? And so they, so was Lebanon. Exactly. Okay. But people don't, don't, don't seem to see the connections, right? And then the U.S., right, working with France would finance these Syrian Lebanese families in IET, in Jamaica, in uh, Dominican Republic, in all the Caribbean islands, just look, right? The president right now of Dominican Republic is a Lebanese. Mm. The president, it, all of them, they so they brought this, this is what they do in America, okay? So it's not, I always say to the to the, to the the ADOS and FBA people, I, I can actually argue your, 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 your um, concern because we've lived it. We know what it is and how the colonist works. And only by looking outwards together can we, can, can, because we have to get rid of, for instance, you know, so Sykes Pico was a way for the Arabs um, uh, to be unleashed as weapons in the post colonial spaces, right? So that you know, you didn't see the colonists, the regular white colonists. You saw these buffer races. And, and our intellectuals weren't talking about it, okay? That Not that I know of anyways, right? So that's how the whole rice thing happens, right? And recently, as I was telling you when we were talking about it, they have studied black men in particular. They've studied black men in black biology, in the army and in the prisons. They've kept us in a captured space in those two places, especially in America. One of the things they know that affect black uh, minds, especially young black minds, is lead. If you Google U uh, U.S. rice to IET has a deadly level of lead. So they're feeding that to those people you see that now they're telling you are gangs. They're, and they've been feeding it to us, knowing what it does to young black men. And I don't know what it does, you know, what, you know, if it's just young black, but I know they're diabolical. I know they studied us. They've studied us. So they have cadmium, some, some, something called cadmium in there. So lead and um, uh, I forgot, but just look at, look it up, right? It's, it's, it, there's a study right now. So the right, so first they destroy your food sovereignty, force you into these slums, give you these sweatshop jobs, and then when they take the sweatshop out, 
these people have nowhere to go. Okay. And then they bring in, because they vote for President Aristide, they bring in the UN to crush and kill them. And then they leave guns in their hands. And then they bring drugs. Drugs is another weapon of the United States to have a dossier on every black man. Remember, Guy Philippe was, was used, and whenever they use these black folks, right? <laughs> There's one right now that that that's going to make they maybe they finish with uh, Puff Puff Daddy, but whenever they use these black men as intermediaries to put out what Russell Simmons, for instance, and 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 Puff da Puff Daddy put out in the black community to atrophy our children and our people's minds, then they throw you away. So Guy Philippe um, was a U.S. trained from Ecuador. They, they sent him to Ecuador. He was trained, and then they brought him back to, to IEC, and they used him to, um, they say he was a freedom fighter. Just like they're saying to you now, barbecue is a freedom fighter and a revolutionary. In 2004, that's what Woods, Woods Blitzer and CNN was doing, right? And then later on, when he tried to become president, they put him in jail on a nine year sentence, just like they do with No Urega, who was theirs, right? A CIA asset. So if you if, if you if you go, you know, if you start thinking that you know you actually got to where you got by yourself, they just pull out their dossier. And and they're the ones that you know plot to get you involved in the drugs. Because our people don't know anything about the flying of of flying routes and all of that stuff from Colombia. Okay. So, so colonialism is run through drugs, sex, uh, making, you know, giving you no local economy so that your food is coming from the Dominican Republic and coming from America. And then it's filled with cancerous heart disease type things. That's why um, the Haitian people outside of Port-au-Prince are pushing right now to go back to irrigating their lands and trying to build their agriculture. And that's why I say to people, if you want to help, this is the thing that we don't want charity, okay? Because we know what it means. It's like it's like the, they they use charity with the um, uh, uh, reservations in America. And they know that when once they take a man's agency away from him, um, those folks were alcoholics because they no longer had a, a purpose. Because the United States would put them on a reservation and then you know give them a monthly food, and there was a, not a space for them. And what they do with their NGOs, right? And so, where are the guns coming from? The guns are coming from the Syrian Lebanese oligarchs, those Syrian Lebanese oligarchs, you will never see on CNN, right? They're only going to put you barbecues there who they tell you is a cannibal, right? They did the same thing doing the first occupation. When the I never even heard of them. You're yeah, right. Well, I never even heard of them. Do not even mention them at all. Like they don't they even just, exist. They, they just do that. So that's kind of what, you know, so food sovereignty is what we're trying to get back. Physical security is what we're trying to get back. During the Haitian Revolution, what we learned was when the strangers, the Mundele, came, we had to go inside because all the stuff that they're giving you is going to give you, is, is not good for your well being. So, what you're seeing, uh, like for me, um, it takes me, it takes me some energy to come here and tell you this story because it is, it, it, it you know, the more you tell it, the more you see it, the more it, it it sickens you. It can make you unwell. They know that. That's why they they spend a lot of time showing you young black men being shot by white police, but you never see the other the the uh, the other side, right? Because they know psychologically it it's a way to hurt you. Mm, thank you, family. Please support the the show. Like, comment, and share. Got to get the comments up, the likes up. Please share it to about 10 people you know. want to thank everyone for the uh, the Cash App love and, and the super chats to several people, uh, Wendy and Lauren and, and several others, Ronald, 
Um, family, please, thank you for that. Um, keep continue showing your love and support. It just goes into what we are doing um, in terms of this this nation building. Uh, Professor Smalls, as as we as we as we speak and we have this discussion, one of the things I, I hear um, and this is with, with the eighty what's going on in the in the mineral resources and the riches and the wealth and the positioning is similar to what's going on in the Congo. Um, can you can you speak to that? I guess in terms of what's going on the Caricom and Africom and 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 how those two things are kind of working in conjunction. Yeah, well, remember, AFRICOM is the acronym for the American military apparatus in Africa. Um, you know, we fought against it very hard, but Obama came in and bamboozled uh, black folks into thinking he was the black president, and we woke up and AFRICOM existed. Um, I remember one morning, you know, I, we own a hotel in Ghana, and we had just had a rally, and, and I'd spoken out on Ghanaian TV. And I came downstairs to breakfast in the hotel and I always tell the people, I speak a little tree, a little fancy, right? But I don't tell nobody I speak, you know, it's better folks don't know. Um, but the people who work for me knew, and I said, don't, when I come into the restaurant in the morning, don't speak to me in English, right? Because I, I want to know who's around me. So this morning, Josephine came in and greeted me in English. Oh, Professor Small, blah, 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 blah. And there was a, a man, a middle-aged black man, sitting across from me, um, his wife and a, looked like a 10-year-old daughter. And he came over, he gets up from his table, walk over to me, extends his hand, and says, my name is Colonel so-and-so from Dusseldorf, Germany. Good morning, Mr. Small. That's an open threat. I understand what a threat is, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Um, so I go like, wow. How did they get you here that fast to my little hotel, you know? But their thing is very clear. CARICOM is a different animal. These are a bunch of colonial puppets masquerading as independent leaders of democratic states that have never truly severed themselves from the Brits and the French, you know? How dare they think that they could come and, and collaborate with the people who did all the things sister just told you, and that ain't even the, the thimbleful of the crimes they've committed against Haiti, right? The leaders of CARICOM know about all of this. And some of them are supposed to be revolutionary leaders. I'm not gonna call their name. The ambassadors, the Cubans, and they're in the reparation movements and all that. They all know who they are, because I know them. I've worked with many of them. And you would come and sit at a table and cover for America because Biden and them don't want you to see their hands. So they got a bunch of black hands from the Caribbean, America, and Africa to come and do their dirty work, all right? After they've murdered the president of Haiti because he tried to get out from under their foot and went to seek some help from Russia, Venezuela, and Turkey. And within two weeks after returning home, he's assassinated, okay? And so, now they know they, they want to keep the status quo, but because of this election, they're afraid to put their hands out there to be seen in the open. So they're now legitimizing the CARICOM that, that can't even do the basics for the islands of the Caribbean they're supposed to be working for. And you've got a police force coming from uh, Kenya who has one of the highest crime rates in Africa. And you're going to send your police to murder your brothers and sisters in Haiti? But what, what did they get, 600 million? What was the payoff there? He you asked know? for 600 million. The United and, States is giving him uh, 100 million, and they're 100 trying million. to get more. Mm -hmm. Who's he, the president of Kenya? Yes. Yes, or William you Ruto. All these collaborators and traders out, because that's what they are. They're William participating Ruto. in the genocide of our people and trying to use media and, and, and public relations gimmicks to make me think there's something else going on, you know? Someone put in the comments to please force from Jamaica as well. Well, Jamaica is a part of the CARICOM criminals, so they're all there together. <laughs> you know? We gotta call them what they are. And, 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 and I remember how the gangs of Jamaica have been holding the people hostage forever, since the mm -hmm. 70s. Mm -hmm. and, and they're the ones that put the politicians in power. So Holmes, who's the prime minister, is put in by the by the gangs that mm -hmm. are directed by the United States. 
the but now they're going to tell who us. Asiaga against Manly. Those are the mm. same people who are still manipulating CARICOM today. You know, and now they want them to cover for them. They're saying we want to come and do the same dirty work we were doing with the UN, with the, with the core group, but we don't want nobody to see us. So black, you blacks, so we've been putting the money, we've been giving you the money, we've been giving you the play. We want you now to come and cover and make it look like this is a black thing. But who the hell is the Montana group and a bunch of black Americans and one or two Haitian American collaborators and the Negroes from Caracom to come and make a decision for Haiti? Haiti's got what, 4 million people? What's, what's the population in Haiti? Around 4 million? 13 million. Uh, listen, we, we are 60, we make up 60% of all the CARICOM nations. Like we right. have the largest population. And they, right. these people with like 3 million, 2 and million. Little, it's like a little bunch of little fleas going to come in. Right, who are who big, still a commonwealth of so-and-so. You know, yeah. And so we've got to stop being played. Haiti can take care of itself. It doesn't need anybody. Trust me. The Haitian people can take care of themselves. If they couldn't, you wouldn't be working so damn hard to control them. And for those of us who say we're activists, get on your little keyboard. Every single platform should be talking about Haiti. Every nice. single platform should be listening to what we've said and Jemima and a number of other scholars that's trying to put the information out here in the bits and pieces. Let's start stop faking that we are Pan-Africanists. If we are Pan-Africanists, let's circle our wagons around Haiti. And I think, sister, I know you didn't talk about it, but on the 8th, that's when that eclipse, the, the solar eclipse. And I've already spoken to Nana and Ketsi and others in Ghana. We want drums to be played. We need to tell the people in the world what time of day we want to stop those drums playing on that day. And the people chanting and calling for the freedom of Haiti and for Haiti to be governed by Haitians. And we will play drums for at least, we should at least six hours on mm. the day of that eclipse across the world. And so every platform we can get on and talk about this, every contacts and connections, any of you who are watching this have, reach out to them, tell them to get their drums ready. What time of day you think as a leader should start playing the drums? At noon. At noon time, on the eighth. At the highest level of the sun. Yes. And let's play with some energy. You want to see voodoo less loose? Let's let the voodoo loose in the world. <laughs> let's use those drums from Africa to the Caribbean, to Central South America, to North America, to Asia. We want the drums playing. I've even called brothers and sisters in Australia. We're trying to reach brothers and sisters in Hawaii. We want everybody playing the drums. The only thing I couldn't tell those I reached out to in the last few days was the time. Now we know the time. We're going to make it noon Eastern Standard Time and whatever that reflects in the other time zones. Mm. And in the playing the drums, we're calling for the freedom of Haiti to be governed by Haitian people under their own notion of self-determination. That's what we should put into the ether. And that's what the drum vibrations have carried. That's right. That's right. powerful, powerful, powerful. Um, wow, family, listen, as Professor Small said, let's get the word out. Please like, comment, and share. Um, that's the most important thing while we're here. Uh, we're definitely having a powerful discussion. And, and um, to my panel here, I want to kind of bring it back full circle. Um, I know the clock is kind of winding down now, but I want to kind of start where we end it and speak about Jean-Jacques Jean Desaline um, once again. And this is for you, Sister Esley. Professor Smalls, you can add on to this as well. Um, what were his main three ideals? What are the three ideals of Jean-Jacques Desaline? This why is that important said, today? Oh, okay. Um, so black rule independent nation. Remember I said that, that all of the nations that you see in CARICOM who are now trying to give us lessons in and mm -hmm. universal freedom, um, they are, they are, they they have the Toussaint Louverture template, which is their colony of the metropole, right? It's like a black rule colony. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That was Toussaint. That's that's you know he died, so we don't know if he would have changed. But that's what Toussaint stands for. Desalines stands for Black Ruled Independent Nation. Okay, and then Desalines says that you know all Haitians are black. This is a black land. Going back to the ancient definition of warriorship, honor and dignity in warriorship, right? Remember I said that he said that a black man is a good husband, a good a good son, a good father, and um, above all, a good um, soldier, right? Because he understands where we are in this, in this carnal world and how important that is. Um, his other... Um, is the name. Remember, um, uh, when he beat Wauchambeau on November 29th, he went to the edge and over at Fort Liberté, and he says, I have avenged America. And he meant all who had been genocide by the colonist, including the Taino Africa, uh, the Taino, the, 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 the Haitian, Tainos and the 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 Haitian Africans in the 300 years that he we had we had been on that island, um, and they had they had killed us, and he meant everyone, including all of the folks in the Americas and this hemisphere, and that's what the na- the nation is. The nation is for all those who come from us. Depuis les mots is le since, since since the beginning of time, since the time of you know the outbreath and the in breath, since since the first word became life, um, and then all that is here and all that is coming, and uh, we are we are supposed to live not just for ourselves, but like Professor Small lives right for the collective. And, and, and leaving behind footprints of dignity, um, of who and what we are. That's why we know the men in Boko Haram, the men in ISIS, the men in, uh, they're not, they need healing. They're not, and some of them will not be healed. We have to understand that too, that um, 95% of, of the people are, are not ever going to be able to get out of their cognitive dissonance. They're going to believe whatever they, they hear. I want to say to folks that I have a case against bringing in um, a, 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 another occupation in IET. Um, it's on my website at esleydantop.com. Please, um, we have a press co- press release. I'd appreciate it if those of you who appreciate anything I've been saying um, and want to assist us to send out our press release, let folks know that we and indigenous Haitians do not want another occupation that our solution is that the guns, we don't manufacture those guns. Those men in, in the streets of Port-au-Prince who keep killing the, the, the poor, you know, I, I say they can't, they, they have not killed the Syrian Lebanese. I have not seen one white body on the streets. <clears throat> I've only seen black bodies on the street, so they can't be revolutionaries, okay? So the day I see Bijo, his family, the Syrian Lebanese, they own 98% of the wealth, right? They own the ports, they privatize the ports, they're ones that bring in the guns. So we say, the United States and all of these domestic Negroes going to Biden to talk about uh, bringing another mercenary force to kill us to leave us with children that they then become gang members because they don't have any father father support because their father is from Chile, from Brazil, from Sri Lanka and all those UN places, right? Just look at those guys who are, uh, yesterday there was a, a guy named Iz- uh, Le Mans Saint-Jour. He just kidnapped some YouTuber who went to Haiti <laughs> um, to talk to you know the gangs and get some clicks. <laughs> All right. So they're making they're making a mockery out of us. Right. Because, like I said, they're only doing it so they can say that this Aline wasn't a revolutionary, that Toussaint and all those people weren't revolutionaries. So that's where we are. Um, Go to my website. Look at the at the case. And I want to show you something. Okay, I want to show you how 
diabolical they are. So the United States says that they need, they want to bring in 1,000 policemen from Kenya. Remember, Ruto is like Kagame. He, he's used to, 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 you know, there's a war between Somalia and Kenya. The United States has promised him some, some military force. And remember, all those wars are, are in the, the, the shorelines. Look, always look at the shorelines if you want to see U.S. strategic interests, right? They will create a whole new nation called Djibouti or Djibouti because they want, they want to keep you inland and control you in the shorelines. They can't do that with IET. So they have to have these men uh, who know nothing about geopolitics kill the people that are in those areas to get rid of them in those areas so that they can control them to do what they want to do. We say they if if the United States or anyone, anyone want to help us stop the killing of the men with U.S. arms, all they have to do, those arms are coming from the United States. The U.S. custom has to keep a better control. And then when it gets to the ports, the ports are owned by Bijo and Merv. We know who they are. As a matter of fact, Gilbert Bijo, just write his name down. He's been sanctioned for financing gangs. You have Michel Matelli. He's been sanctioned also for financing gang. These people live in the United States. And as a lawyer, I mean, you don't even have a need to have a law degree to understand that the person who actually finances the murder and authors the murder is more guilty than the person who pulls the trigger. They're only showing you the ones that pull the trigger. On my free IAT movement page, just go the free, it's not hate, but I'll say it's for those who may not understand. The free Haiti movement, go to Facebook. I have an album of all the pictures of the Syrian Lebanese who have been sanctioned by Canada in the UN and others and uh, uh, like the Dominican Republic because they're financing Jimmy Cherizier. And we say there is a resolution. It's I think it's 2653 of the UN where it says, you know, to, for the their member state to stop trafficking guns into IET. If that was enforced, they would not need a foreign intervention. So that's our answer, right? And then that's what we say. We don't manufacture as good guns. So, so arrest Gilbert Bijo, arrest Mateli. Gilbert Bijo lives in Indian Creek, um, Miami. Okay. Um, he owns the port. As a lawyer, if I had resources, I would sue a class action lawsuit. So anyone who wants to help us with that, right? So that I could say that the port, he has a Panamex port, a very sophisticated Pan Panamex port to bring stuff. So we could own that port. And then he also owns something called the steel of IT, right? That's read IT. We can own his whole thing and give the victims of the gangs some reparations because this billionaire is financing this chaos. So that those are the that's the answer. It's not more US military. Mm. Wow. Thank you. So <clears throat> Professor Smalls, I think we're gonna actually um before I move on Professor Smalls, I'm actually have the last question for him. Um sister Azalee, do you have anything else you'd like to add to the discussion? Um, just that I was gonna say that um while they saying that they're going to bring a thousand and and you know they had a meeting at the white house at biden right i have i have a go to my website people i have something called biden's tyranny and iet so i want to show you something while they're asking you to support a intrusion into iet with kenyan thousand police at the same time we have ten thousand haitian policemen that were trained and some of those people are good people they want to go after the gang members. But what happens is the United States, Biden put an office, an immigration office inside the police department. And they are flying out 
20, they have flown out 25% of the Haitian police. While they're telling you we need a military force, excuse me, a police force to come into IET and take care of the gangs because Haitian police can't do it. Under the Biden program, they're steadily, steadily brain draining and taking out the best people and bring them to America. That's what they're doing. At the same time, the NGOs, they require crisis in order to exist. In that bag of rice that they're bringing in, they're bringing guns too. That's what the NGOs are doing. That's a non-for-profit charitable organization. So the guns are coming from NGO foreigners, the Syrian Lebanese, and we need to stop them people. And if we stop them people, if you want to, if you want to support anything, it should be about um, uh, 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 showing them, showing your constituency, the contradiction between saying, between financing the gang, right? And knowing who's financing it, the politicians, the neo duvalierist politicians and the oligarchs. And at the same time, they have an embargo. The United States has an embargo against giving weapons and resources to the legitimate police. So the gangs out, out, Gun, gun the legitimate police and then they have a, a biden program where they're taking out the police that they've trained so that we have no protection this is genocide people they want us dead they want the land for its strategic position for its resources and because they want to get rid of the idea that we are the land of the brave and the free because of what our ancestors done. But listen, there's a new energy on the planet right now. And this is the time of freedom. And as Professor Small says, I, any, anyone who can feel what I'm saying, who understand what sound means, because they are doing a lot of sound warfare. And I, I, I'm very tuned into sound. So on April 8th, we're going to beat those drums for, for not only IET, but also the Congo. I have this dream, not IET, Congo, and also there, there's something holding Black America. I'm just going to say it. <coughs> um, and it's right there in Louisiana. What's the name of the Angola prison? That's we it, need Angola prison. That's right. African Black America needs to stop Angola prison. There is energy there that must be destroyed. And while I am going to be beating my drum, this I'm going to be beating that center, that Niger Congo center of Africa to be released. IET and all that's underneath it, those, those, those pyramids of our ancestors that are now vibrating very, and they know it, that are vibrating a new energy the three Pisces, big uh, 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 moon uh, planets, and then the total eclipse. People, this is the time that you can actually do something. So April 8th, beat your drums starting at, well, so mm, you at and your own private abundance. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. So Professor Smalls, <clears throat> you know, um, Sister Esalie just just said something about the something holding Black America. I I, I want you to, because again, I think in, in Black America we see a disconnect here because it's not happening within the continent of the United States. I need to make it plain for the brothers and sisters that were born here, and, and let them understand that that what's going on in hate, what in ID is is directly impacting us. Can you just elaborate on that, please? Well, it's simple. There's only one Africa. I don't like to beat around the bush, you know. Um, Foundation of Black America, that other silly name, the 10,000 other names we use. I'm a Muslim, I'm a Hebrew, Israelite, I'm a Christian. Malcolm says, when the devil see your ass, <laughs> it's the black people, period, okay? And we know this, we understand, but we're being cowards. See. The Biden administration have sent out a whole bunch of people in the field talking about what they've done for black folks, but ain't nobody said one thing that they've done for black folks in the three and a half years they've been in there, okay? And now they're trying to do a fake out on us. 
and pretend they've done something for us by telling us Trump is the boogeyman. Trump ain't no different from any white man I know. I grew up in South Carolina, all right? Trump is the atypical, with a little more slant to insanity, of white American male. <laughs> and those who are backing him, the people who are backing Trump is the same people who are backing Biden. See, Trump and Biden are nothing more than managers, right? Who can manage the system best for me? All right? And and they're, they're vying by saying, I'm a better manager. So give my little clan a little more juice because I'll be the best manager. So I don't care which one is the manager. Both of them are going to try and destroy Haiti. I don't care which one is the manager. Both of them are going to perpetuate the genocide against African-Americans. I don't care which one is the manager. Then over a million women in 10 years have been raped in the Congo. All of them have sat through this, Republicans and Democrats, Black caucus, Negro caucus, um, the little sisters running around in the Midwest raising hell when there's something happened to Muslims, but they can't speak the word Haiti in their mouth. So let's stop playing. You want me to come up and say I have sympathy and pity for you? I will stand for humanity. I will stand with the Palestinian people because it's the right thing and the human thing to do. But I'm not going to stand for the mouthpieces who use the crisis of their people simply to further their little position to be able to walk beside a Biden with a smile. I'm not interested in you that way. Okay. And so what we need to do, young people who are serious about freedom, who are serious about self-determination, flood these fools with emails and, and, and with Instagram and Twitter uh, touches so they could know we know who you are. And our vote matters. All we need to pull from you is a few hundred thousand. We don't even need the million votes to see that you don't get back in the White House and back in the Congress. So we're not going to play. We're going to come after the tool that you want most right now, our vote. If you do not turn your attention to Haiti and protect the Haitian people and stop this thing of bringing in uh, some police force from outside, arm the Haitian police, you train most of them to begin with. I knew some of them and I had some friends who you murdered after you trained them because they wouldn't go along with your program with killing the president. You see? So let's, 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 we, those of us who are using social media, we have a big footprint if we use it for the right thing. There's a couple of millions of us that people can hear every day and they're scared of us. They'll be kicking up all, off of platforms every day because we stand up for black people. Let's stand up for Haiti right now. This is the, this is the epicenter of the struggle right in this minute. And the American congressmen, blacks and whites, need to hear from us and understand that we do not want an invasion force in Haiti. We do not want a foreign police force in Haiti. We do not want this group of seven or the, the Montana group or, 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 or CARICOM to make the decisions on who's going to govern Haiti. And we are not going and we do not want anyone who's talking about governing Haiti to honor any agreements that have been brought about by extortion on the part of this government and the so-called core group and the non-prime minister that they put in place and now I want to act like there's a prime minister. The people of Haiti didn't elect this man. The people of Haiti didn't appoint this man. And you've got him running around America. I think somebody said there he's in California someplace <laughs> now, or I don't yeah. know. In the we don't know. We don't know. And we don't know how many contracts the U.S. has him signing while they hold him, or if and he's dead. In Caracom, we'll let you come in and, and appoint people, but you have to agree to all of the backroom extortionist gun to the head contractual agreement to steal the resources of Haiti that we put together. You know, so this is what we have to tell all the folks who want us to vote for them. If we ain't voting for y'all, I'll vote for my grandkids first. I'll put, put their name on the ballot is right in. That's what I did the last election. <laughs> More people doing it. 
And even my granddaughter had sense enough that she didn't want to be a part of it. She was crying, Grandpa, I don't want to be president. <laughs> you, you know? So we need, but be serious. We have the power, Black America, you have the power to say, don't commit any further crime against Haiti. Otherwise, you will not get a chance to go back to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue or whatever it's called. Wow. Wow. We've got the power. And we've got to be clear. And don't forget, break out your drum. And if you don't have a drum, get a tin pan out of the kitchen, break out a pan from under the sink with some spoons, because wherever we make the rhythm and the vibration on the 8th at 12 noon Eastern time, we're going to light up the world. Light up the world. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sister. Freedom or death. He didn't say freedom and maybe some other things or death. He said, feed them or death. There's nothing in between those two things. They wear it so tight you can't slip nothing else in there. Those are the choices you have. If we don't fight for freedom, they will continue to kill us. You know? That's right. Period. Freedom Most or death. In the world. Freedom or death. Freedom or death. Sister Ezele Dento, thank you so much. Uh, I know you have another show going. Uh, we have some a few more things we want to discuss with Professor Smalls, but we thank right. you so much. I'm happy to just be here with my extraordinary sister, with an extraordinary historical foundation, an extraordinary legal mind, extraordinary courage. We love you. You know that. We will fight with you until, and even after they've killed us, we will stand up as ghosts and continue <laughs> to fight. Okay. In the whirlwind. I'll see That's you it. in the whirlwind. Beat them on Thank death. You. And we, we look forward to having you again on the show soon in the future and uh please let's let's stay in touch and let's let's um let's work together yes very sir. good take care all right thank you thank you so much professor small um yes, talking to the brother king simon i understand that you know you guys have a couple um main right. events coming up soon yeah the six and seven down in atlanta Trying to be very clear and get it on. I'm looking for the flyer. Did he send you a copy? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna actually put it up on the um, on the screen. The screen, the screen momentarily. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna and, get and that we're up there. Looking at spirituality, looking at spirituality as a weapon, because okay. religion has been used as a weapon. Um, they've weaponized the churches, they've weaponized the mosques, they've weaponized the synagogue and the temples against us for centuries. And we're going to use African spirituality as a weapon to counter those religious weapons mm. that have been used against us. Okay. So we got April uh April sixth at um let's see if there's a time on the fly between one and five PM mm -hmm. at the UG Urban Cafe, six forty Evans Street, Southwest Atlanta. So family of you in Atlanta area, um definitely want to check this out. On April 6th, next, I think this, yes, right, next Saturday. This, uh, oh, this up, up, upcoming Saturday, uh, April 6th in Atlanta at 1 p.m. This um, discussion, Professor Smalls, using um, Spiritual Warriors Edition, uh, using warfare as a weapon, spiritual warfare as a weapon. Yes, yes. And I believe we also have something you want to add on to what we were just talking about there, Professor Smalls, before we go on to the next date, that Sunday? Um, well, the next day we're going to cover a similar piece. Uh -huh. Look at spirituality as your reality. See what the Western world did was to take African spirituality, stripped it of its sacred science, and called that science. Then gave us the mythology, which they call religion, and have us thinking that spirituality. And we've just been bamboozled like nobody. And you just came back from Kemet. Yes, Kemet sir. Left the message to try to show you what was sacred about it, what was spiritual about it was this comprehension of cosmology and ecology and the science that explains the two. That's everything from geometry to trigonometry, from astrology to astronomy, you know, from psychology to sociology. That's the spirituality of Africa that have been stripped from African spirituality. And we've been given, and even in, in our demise, diminished state that have been brought about by religion, we even now turn to African spiritual systems and different ethnic groups, and we call them religion. And so we approach Yoruba 
teaching Ifa, just as we did the Abrahamic religion, and that's why they're not working, because these are not religions. These are pathways to understanding cosmology and ecology by mastering the sciences of the universe. And so that, that's going to be the level of discussion. Right. So I see here on April 7th, that's Sunday, is this like an online thing? This is like a, a all day event, people, a Q and A, I guess people in the audience, there are 33 people. I think it's said 33 seats available. Right. Um, they'll be asking you questions and you'll be elaborating in, on spiritual, I guess on, on that topic. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, all right. Sir. All right. So family, you see here, um, the way to get your, your tickets is by text for links and PayPal and cash app. Um, I'm sure this is going to be an extraordinary ex discussion. It's, it's actually also a private event. Um, it says it right here on the flyer, private event. Uh, That's the, the second day. The second day. That's Sunday. Yes. 33 seats available. $99 early bird tickets. Um, get your tickets going sale. They've been on sale since February 1st. So I'm not sure how many is, are still left. Um, but for more information, you can call 347-496-1022. Or you can text it for the links. It says PayPal and Cash App only. This is from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, private all-day Q&A symposium. Only three, 33 seats available. And don't be afraid. We will be discussing Haiti. We will, And all of this, we will be discussing right. Congo. We will be talking about Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali, and the moves that they've made in Africa to break away from the French. All of these will be on the table for discussion in the context of African spiritual awakening. The context of African spiritual awakening. These two events is, I believe, um, spearheaded by my brother, King Simon. Definitely want to make sure we go out and support support these events. If you're in the Atlanta area on April on Saturday, April 6th, you can check it out, the, the cafe from 1 to 5. Um, in this event here from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, the private event on Sunday, April 7th. Yes. So, Professor Smalls, I know, thank you for coming. You're we welcome. understand that, you know, this has been a, uh, a very trying um, a day for you, and we appreciate your time, your energy, your love, um, and, and just being here with the family. But before we let you go, is there anything else you'd like to share? No, again, just reminding people on, on the 8th at 12 noon, pick up your instrument, no matter what it is, whether it's a pot and pan or a djembe drum. And for the next five hours, let's drum the spirit and the energy of the universe so that we can let the world know there is that I can play a drum in South Carolina. And if the person in North Carolina hear me, which they can, and then he would talk to the person in Virginia, talk to the person in Maryland, talk to the person in Delaware, talk to the person in Philly, talk to the person in New York. And within five minutes, we could be speaking to the people in Africa just by the drum. Just by the drum. Just by the drum. Powerful. Powerful. Family, you heard that message. Please help get the word out. And um, Jesse, get the word out in the UK about the drumming. Yes. 12 noon on the 8th, we're going to set fire to the universe for five hours. Yes, 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 yes. Nice. Thank you so much, Professor Smalls, for being a part of this discussion. Yes, sir. And um, we look forward to having you. We called you earlier, our resident scholar here, Happy Talks. And uh, we're just waiting eagerly and patiently for you to come. Um, but the sister did a fantastic job. Oh, um, yes. And, um, yeah. Brilliant we, scholar. Absolutely. Brilliant. Absolutely. And um, uh, Kaba Kamini, um, Hiawatha Kama Kamini, actually suggested, you know, that I reach out to her and then yeah. Alicia spoke to you and, you know, you guys had the relationship and that's how it was, you know, this was, uh, this was brought to being through, through the happy way, the way of unity and connections and partnerships with others. So we live in the spirit of happy and we appreciate and love everyone and all the people here in the chat um, yeah, that I were a part of the discussion. Washington State this weekend, <laughs> so I hope he's firing it up up there. Yes, 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 he is. He said he's in Washington State. I think he's going to, from Washington State, he's going to be in Atlanta. So he's just, he's all over the place. He's everywhere. So, so definitely. Oh, <clears throat> before we go, we understand you have a trip to Ghana. Let's tell people how they can, you know, uh, experience that and be, be a part of that. Actually, let me see if we can go ahead and um, get that up too. But while we're trying to get the flyer up for Ghana, you want to just go ahead and talk about the your trip and where they can go to register? Yeah. I'm going to give, they have to um, go to Professor Small African World 
www.africanworld.com, professorsmallafricanworld.com. And um, the flyer will be there. Um, and the, the number, the telephone number, I'm going to try to bring that up, that they can call. It's uh, 516-406-6567, and I'm, I'm getting, oh, that's 8567, 8567, 516-406-8567. Um, or go to Professor Small African World and the flyer will be there. Um, or go to Professor Small um, webpage, Professor Small, www, just put professorsmall.com um, and it'll pop up. So, right. Professor Small African World on my Facebook page, <clears throat> which most people go to, everything will be there. We leave it on, the, I think it's the, the 19th of July and we'll be returning on the second of uh august and it's going to be an extraordinary trip we go, we're going to cover multi-states in ghana we're going to be in the central region the western region the 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 eastern region the airway region and of course the accra region um, yep. we'll do everything from the canopy walk to riding a yacht on the volta lake to visiting the slave dungeons getting naming ceremonies and learning about land purchases we'll be meeting with the company corporation in ghana and so you can discuss with the government itself your interest in business and land acquisition and so forth hmm. Hmm. you know you I'm, I'm i'm so happy you just mentioned the slave dungeons because <clears throat> it brings me to something i wanted to um discuss with you but before we get into that i'm not going to forget my point here's here's the flyer family july 19th to august 2nd um I guess it's the also the Emancipation Day in, in Ghana. Why you guys are there, right. Professor? That is, that is Emancipation Day, and we'll be going to Ascendment So, um, the Sacred River, um, where our ancestors, many of them, died in trying to escape. And we've also <laughs> brought three bodies there. One came from Barbados, one from the United States, one from uh, Jamaica. Um, these are all formerly enslaved people. Sister Crystal from Jamaica was 400 years old. Brother Carson from the United States was 275 years old. And I forgot how old the brother is they brought from uh, uh, Barbados back home. And it's a it's a beautiful ancestral tribute site. Um, the president always come and other government officials to greet us there. We hold a big Durba. A Durba is a festival with all of the traditional leaders in the community. And then we go and visit the, the river itself, where we took our last bath before we were placed into the dungeons. That was the key thing in the river. Once you've marched across country for a month, this is where they stopped to bathe you. And then you will then march to the slave dungeon in Elmina, Cape Coast. You know, it's amazing, but everything you just described is what you, when we film the, um, Ghanaian aspect of Hopi. Of Hopi right. We were fortunate enough to be in that be in the Durba. We right. went to the we went to the um right. the lake and, and everything Professor Smalls just described is actually a huge part of the film. Like I said, for those people who haven't seen it, it's on Amazon Prime. I think it's like a dollar ninety nine to rent. Please tell a friend to tell a friend. And and even he also spoke about the slave fort or the slave dungeon, excuse me, which brings me to my the the question I've been wanting to ask you for several several weeks now is what is happening in Elmina with the restaurants? I understand that they have built in the slave dungeons. Is that right. like a real thing? So I hear there's a lot of conversations, people are upset about that rightfully so, but can you, can you elaborate on that please? Yeah, we learned a couple of months ago that a restaurant and a bar in this restaurant was open in the slave dungeon. When you first walk in, if you make the right turn, on that side of the courtyard of the dungeon. Um, so we put a, um, I authored uh, a petition that has been circulating online that we've sent to the president and other officials in the country. Um, and there have been meetings going on weekly. I was trying to find out the last meeting with the government um, was attended by Baba Kohane and other African Americans who are on the ground and living in Ghana. That was on. Thursday. I have not gotten the feedback from that. But I heard that once they saw the petition, a lot of 
officials were very upset because they didn't want this to get across the world. But the petition has gone across the world, telling them to get those things out of there. They have so many other buildings along that street if you want to open a restaurant or a bar. Why would you put it in a place where millions of our ancestors were imprisoned and died for hundreds of years? That should be the most sacred space in Ghana of all spaces. And in 1992, we did have that space consecrated by all of the chiefs of the region. And it was visited by all of the gods of the region. All of them. People may not understand what it means, all of the gods. All of them came and possessed somebody in the Grand Durba inside the place to bring their presence and to show that they approve of this place becoming the shrine to those killed in the Middle Passage. This mm. was 1992. And for anyone in leadership to allow this to happen, it's a desecration not only of the shrine, but of the gods of their own mothers and fathers. Mm. Damn. Wow. 1992. All right. Well, family, you had the opportunity to take this extraordinary trip. The flyer is there. Um, be a part of this experience, Professor Smalls. How many years have you been taking folks back and forth to Ghana? Well, it's been myself, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, and our sister ancestor, Dr. Leah Williams. And it's been over 40 years now. Over 40 years. So you have 40 years of experience here, Professor Smalls, going to Ghana. And from the north to the south, you guys go up north and come back south. And there's so much, so much there to see. Um, we're going to try to be a part of this experience as well. Um, the fly is there. We've been sharing it online. So those people who are not aware, um, the dates are here. And the telephone number, again, where they can go and, and register is uh, 516. Let me do it again. You know, I'm, I'm, my, my little eyes isn't as good as it used to be. That's why I'll be wearing these glasses when y'all see me. No, but I'm small wearing glasses, yep. And that number is 516 406 six five six seven four zero six six five six seven five one six four zero six six five six seven and all you have to do when you call is tell them you're calling for professor small's tour to ghana and they will put you in touch with everything you need to have and to know is that the number there yes sir okay five one six four zero six six five six seven and, and say you were looking That's for the Professor Small's trip to Ghana. Sister Sharifa, who has been doing tours for longer than me, she was doing Dr. Ben's tour to Kimmon back in the day. So we've been working with her for a lot of years now. Okay. All right. Well, family, um, obviously this is something you definitely want to experience for those who have been considering um, going to Ghana. This is a great opportunity to go during the Emancipation Day. So it's the celebrations around, around that get a chance to uh, travel and learn from the master teacher himself. So if you are considering it on the fence, I would definitely take this opportunity to, to be a part of this extraordinary experience. Right. And and, and you love it. Ghana is, is way beyond what you may think you know about Ghana. It's an right. extraordinary people. The country is made up of extraordinary people. The people who we call the Ga community that lives in the Accra Plains, but they are the Nubians. And they talk about their Nubian history. Their boats have carvings of Kef, their fishing boats got paintings and carvings of Kefra and Asar on them. Um, you're talking about the Ewe, who's saying that they speak, the Ewe language itself is spoken Medunetia, okay? You're talking about the Akans, who's saying we are the remnants of the ancient Ghana empire. So there's a lot that, that's below the surface that you can learn about the populations that make up Ghana. You know? And to see the beautiful cities and the beautiful countryside, to go to Sunyani and the Bonahapo region, to go to Kamasi and the Ashanti region, or Cape Coast and the Central region, or Takarati and Sekundi in the Western region, and then Tamale in the Northern region. And you will see this diversity of Africans. And when you hear their story, you don't buy into the myth of how we 
sold ourselves into slavery. When you hear their stories of the wars they waged against slavery for centuries, then you realize how much lies we are being told every day, even now. Mm. Thank you, Precious Moss. Well, family, thank you so much for being a part of this uh, discussion on the underlying issues behind the crisis in Haiti. And um, we want to thank the guest again, uh, Sister Ezele Danto, and Professor Jane Small for being a part of this amazing, amazing, amazing discussion. And uh, please continue to support Hoppy by like, commenting, sharing for all those people who've um, donated their hard earned money. We appreciate you, we love you. Um, in the cash out, the super chats, it was several people and we want to thank them. All for those who actually go ahead and do that while the show's actually after the recordings, we want to thank you for that as well. And please, again, always like, comment, and share. And um, for those people who um, are interested in going to Ghana, right now is a great opportunity um, with, a, with, a, with a great legend and living legend that we have with us, Professor James Small, and definitely should take that opportunity to do that. All right. So thanks again, Professor Smalls. We yes, appreciate sir. you. All yes, right. Sir. So we're going to go ahead and say good night to you. And we're going to go ahead and close out the show. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. right. Please. Family, there it is. Enough exciting edition of Happy Talks. Um, it's about two hours long right now. Definitely want to close it out. Again, family, we're going to start or end where we, we started. Happy, the foundation of what we do here. Um, the film, not the the talks. It's two hour, twelve minute film. People have seen. They're like, oh, I've seen Happy. No, no, that's the Happy Talks. The film itself is is on Amazon. Again, check it out. Um, those people don't have a copy, they can definitely rent it or buy it there. Um, also, the newsletter. Please sign up for the newsletter and be a part of all things Happy. Stay in touch and tune what we have going on and the Happy merchandise, which is great. I'm always rocking it. Um, as we have a happy merchandise super sell going on right now. Uh, we're trying to liquidate a lot of what we have to bring in the clear space for some new items. So it's a great opportunity to take advantage of that um, and, and be a part of it. And again, family, um, thank you for being a part of this discussion and we'll see you again soon. Peace. What we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?